YouTube, this is Techie just coming at you with my 10th Q&A. So let's get into the first question. Do you think upgrading for Photoshop CS4 to CS5 is necessary? Uh, this is an interesting question, just simply because it really depends on your situation. If you're using Photoshop for just simple photo editing, stuff of the like, just here and there, and not really a huge user, I wouldn't recommend upgrading. But then again, if you're looking at an art program, if you're in an art program or you're a professional photographer, or it's what you do for your job, there are quite a few features in CS5 that are not or were not in CS4, so definitely upgrading would be beneficial for you. But again, if you're just doing simple edits here and there, CS4 will definitely suffice, especially if you've paid for the software, it's expensive to upgrade. So I would just stick with CS4 for now. Um, until you have the money or whatever to upgrade or CS6 is probably on the horizon at some point So you'll probably just upgrade to that I guess if you chose to upgrade in the future What do you think of the new Beats mixers? The new Beats mixers look really cool Because um, they're a combination between the pros and the solos if they are Half as good in terms of build quality I will be quite impressed with them. Um, I'm not sure how much they are going to be, so that is going that remains to be seen, um, or at least of what I know of. If you guys know how much they said they're going to cost, definitely let me know down below. If they are sub $200, I will probably most likely be picking up a real pair for you guys. But if not, we'll see. Like if they have a replica, why not? Why not review it for you guys and see if it is any good? But definitely, I would have to pick up a real pair to judge the sound quality of the real pair before even considering looking at a replica. Do you like Adele? I actually really do like Adele. Um, for the last two or three months or so, I've been hooked on her songs. She has not left my iPod or my iPhone. Um, but I feel that she's a little bit overplayed at the moment just simply because she is so awesome and she says she is so original. Her songs are constantly on the radio and it just a song. But you know what, though, for me personally, I'm still not sick of her music. And that's saying something because they're, it's always on the radio. Um, but I do know quite a few people that are sick of hearing the same song a gajillion, bajillion times over. And they all say it's a shame because her songs are awesome, but they've heard them far too many times. But do I love Adele or like Adele? Yes, I really do like Adele. Do you think you would still be into tech if it weren't for Apple? Um, I think I would always be technically, technically or technical minded um, in, in terms of me loving tech because I started really young with video games and stuff like that. And then I did end up getting into more so into computers. I did have a PC for a while. Um, that was my first computer I ever had was a Dell. Ooh. It was a Dell computer, it had a 19 inch screen, and I do believe it was a single core processor. I think it was a Pentium 4. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, I can't really remember back that far. But it was, at that time, it was a great computer. Now, looking back at it, oh my god, that thing is probably like a dinosaur and it is way too slow. But that's not the point. Um, would I be interested in other products? The thing is, guys, if you took Apple out of the running, most likely a lot of the products that are on the market now would not be the same. Um, Android would not be influenced by iOS. Um, Windows, Windows new phone would not be influenced. Everything would be different. So I really don't know if I would have gone the same path because what really brought me into the technical world was the iPod and the iPhone. And um, if that wasn't there, I don't know if I would still be here reviewing tech for you guys and being so interested in the tech world. I would probably be a total art geek in just which I am already, but I would just be all up in my sketchbook all the time and not really be interested in anything else. Um, that being said, if Apple never existed, probably another company would have invented something similar. So I am not sure. That is a question I really can't answer. How is work on your big school project coming? Thanks for asking. That's so sweet. Um, it's going all right. I've got all my roughs and stuff done in terms of lining. What I'm really nervous about is it's actually due this week, which is, oh my God, I can't even think about that. My heart, literally, like if you could see, it's like a cartoon heart right now. The heart started pounding. Um, is adding color. Adding color traditionally, for whatever reason before this year, I could do it. But our teachers scared the crap out of us this year and made us so nervous with color that I've lost a lot of that skill in terms of traditional color with watercolors, um, tempera, stuff like that. So hopefully 
I can execute it properly. I have this like vision in my head. I'm going to redo this project over like four or five times uh, before I get it the way I want it. Because right now, as of now, I mostly do color digitally. Um, I am more so going to become a digital artist, but it's very important to learn technical skills before um, applying that to digital. But I'm struggling right now with traditional color. I think everybody in my year is. Um, so hopefully it goes well. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Do you find it difficult being a Canadian tech reviewer in terms of product? Um, this is this is something that it does it does bother me to a certain degree because everything is more expensive to ship over here and I also have a hard time getting US based companies to send me review product. Um, it, it, it really doesn't make sense to me because we do live like right next to each other. So getting product from the US should be a lot simpler for me than it would be someone in Europe or somebody um, overseas. And from what I can tell, there are reviewers in Euro Europe that get products from the US a lot easier and faster then I would get them here. And it really makes no sense because Canada is really US, it's, it, wear your hat pretty much. Um, so it shouldn't be so difficult, but there are a ton of products based in the US, like the Kindle, Fire, uh, the Nook, pretty much all of those types of things are pretty much based in the States. Um, even soda, even like pop, Mountain Dew or Mountain Dew um, is located in the US. So it's very, it's. For me, it's a little bit frustrating because I am such a nerd and I love everything tech and I wish I could get everything that's in the States. But I mean, I love where I live and I love Canada. So there's nothing against my country per se. It's just more so sucks that we aren't on the same page in terms of products. Do you prefer Beats by Dre over other headphones? Okay, so I have to address this for you guys because um, I get a, you, I do a lot of reviews on Replica Beats because I get asked to review Replica Beats on a regular basis. I want to review stuff that you guys are interested in, and that is my most requested thing, is to review Replica Beats for you guys. Um, so that's why I review so many. Also, I really do like them, but from my other Q&A, you guys know I don't keep them um, all. I'm ju I just get stuck with some of them sometimes, uh, but mostly my friends just help me out and they buy a pair or whatever, and so on for so forth. That's not important. What I'm trying to say is in terms of you're looking at real beats, we're talking about real beats by Dre, the studios, we're just going to talk about the studios at a 300 to $400 price tag. They are not worth the price. They're not, um, in Canada, they are 350 plus tax. So 420, like around there for beats by Dre studios. And for me personally, I don't think that the sound quality is worth that kind of money and the build quality. I just don't feel that they're worth that. There are so many other headphones out on the market that are in that price point that would blow them out, um, audio wise. But in terms of actually being functional for iPhones, um, being a easy to carry around, having a nice style to them, and now they come in all sorts of different colors, that's where Beats by Dre really has um, has control over the audio industry. And to be honest with you, you see, I, I get asked all the time, well, you see, you see professionals wearing Beats by Dre everywhere, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's because they're endorsed by them. They are told to wear them and they are paid to wear them. Uh, because it makes you guys think that they're freaking amazeballs and they're the only thing on the market. But there are headphones that are quite neglected, such as Sennheisers, Audio Technicas, uh, Bear Dynamics, a whole bunch, even Sony. Sony is a huge company with headphones and audio. And I absolutely love Sony's headphones. I'm a huge fan of Sony's headphones. And most likely in the future, if you guys are interested, I will pick up quite a few pairs of them to review for you. But at this particular moment, it's b pretty much been beats, 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 beats. Everybody wants beats. That doesn't mean that they're my favorite headphones. They're my favorite headphones for commuting. Um, as of right now, it's easier for me to use a pair of Beats by Dre headphones than a big clunky, um, pair of studio headphones, not Beats by Dre Studio, actual studio, studio monitoring or stereo headphones. 
um, to take to school with me. The cord is shorter. Um, they have noise canceling, so I love that when I'm walking through the woods because I hate the sounds of critters, as you guys know from my other or past Q and A's. And they just work better. They're more portable. They fold up. I can put them in my bag or I can keep them around my neck, and it's not too intrusive when I'm drawing and stuff. So I prefer them for on the go. Do I like the sound of the Beats by Dre headphones? Yes, I like the sound of. I, I do. I love the sound, but they're not worth $400 or $450 at a price tag of about 100 bucks. And if you want like different colors and stuff going to 150 they are worth that price point. And I think multiple people would agree with me on that. But for the real deal, they're not worth it, guys. Definitely check out other headphones that are in the same price range if you're willing to spend that much on headphones because you will find headphones that will completely blow your mind in comparison. What is your favorite type of music? And is there a talent you wish you had? My favorite type of music, guys, I don't have a favorite type of music. I listen to pretty much everything. And that's the truth. Like, I am very versatile with my um, music favorites and whatnot, from rap to classical. Like, really, if you look through my iPhone, like my iPod, I have... It's pretty much just a jar of colors. Um, just like just like jar of paint, I guess, or for me personally. Being an artist, I'm always covered in paint, but um, pretty much that's it. I love all sorts of different types of music. What talent do I wish I had? I'd wish I could dance. I am horrible at dancing. I have no sense of coordination in terms of dancing, which makes no sense because I'm I'm when I was younger, I played soccer, I played basketball, I played street hockey, I played a whole bunch of sports, and my, my hand and eye coordination are perfect. It's my feet and eye coordination in terms of moving to beats and stuff. I am so horrible at it. It's just embarrassing. So I hate dancing. I hate dancing in public. Um, I don't really even dance at home by myself. So I really wish that I actually picked up on, I have, I have a musical talent, like I can sing and I can hear rhythm. Um, so it's not like I have none of that whatsoever but I just can't move to it. It's, I don't know, it's like, it's like I'm disabled or something. If anybody else can't dance, please let me know down below to make me feel a bit better, because it is something I'm kind of self-conscious about. Do you play an instrument? The main instrument I played in high school, starting actually in grade six, so from uh, middle school onward, all the way through, so for seven years, I played the alto saxophone. And in that time, I was in band. I know, I was a band geek. Um, I played the alto saxophone. I learned how to play tenor, bass clarinet, clarinet, trumpet, trombone, uh, baritone, um, a little bit of drums, not a lot. Same with bass guitar. And I started learning a bit of guitar, but I actually didn't advance far enough to actually remember anything. Uh, but I, it is something that I would be still even interested in learning about now. Just simply don't have the time with everything going on. But I do love singing, and that is my main instrument. I sing on a regular day basis. Pretty much I get everybody pounds on the door when I'm in the shower uh, because I'm singing pretty much at the top of my lungs. I love singing. For me, if anybody doesn't consider vocals an instrument, stop it! In the words of Wilson Tequan, that, that is anyway. Um, I think vocals are an incredible instrument. Does incorrect grammar annoy you? Incorrect grammar does not bother me. In, in everyday speech, it does not bother me. Um, if I'm reading an essay or something and there's incorrect grammar, it doesn't irritate me. Like, I just correct it. I don't, I don't know why everybody, I have quite a few people in my life that are irritated, absolutely drives them freaking bonkers if something is spelled improperly. Like, I don't understand why that's such a big deal. Just correct it. Move on. Move on to something different. Um, and actually, I have people in my life that correct my speech all the time. As you guys know, I make up a lot of words. I say amazeballs and awesome sauce and all sorts of different weird, funky words. And I have people in my life that correct me and hate on me because of those words. And I, I don't know. That's who I am. I don't think that I should be penalized for the way I speak. Um, if I mispronounce something, please, hell no, do not correct me. I get corrected on a regular day basis, and oh my god, it drives me, probably that drives me more back crap than incorrect grammar itself. So guys, that about sums up my 10th Q&A. Thanks for being awesome subscribers. And if you haven't, definitely check out my last, well, my, not my last video, 
the video before that about my prints and hopefully I can get my store started for you about next week. I'm going to try and get all the prints done this week and then I will have them up on the store for next week. And if you guys could purchase some of those, that would be awesome. And don't forget that I will be personally signing them. So when you check out through Etsy and everything and in the comments down below, let me know what you guys want me to say and I will have my silver signature on there for you and make it all personalized and pretty. So until next time, folks, toodles.